General Manager Day for back-to-back guests. Steve Kime, Arizona Cardinals in studio. You can go to ArizonaSports.com and hear that conversation if you missed any of it. Now it's time to talk Suns with their general manager. Ryan McDonough is live in studio for Newsmakers Week 2018, something we do every year. But I admit, a lot of times, Ryan, it's happened right in the middle of of when you had to leave for the All-Star break or it's happened in the middle of you going on a a scouting trip, getting ready for the NBA draft or free agency. So uh, really appreciate the fact that this one was able to work this year. How are you? I'm doing all right, guys. Yeah, the trade deadline was last week. Uh, We're leading into the All-Star break this weekend. We got Devin Booker participating in the three-point contest, which we're excited about. So uh, I'm glad to see you guys. Let's uh, let's. The first question is relaxing. Are you you doing anything this weekend? Are you going on any trips? You doing anything relaxing, or you just 20 hours a day? Here we go. Well, I'm I'm doing uh, some exciting things, including watching film of guys from the G League to try to help uh, the back end of our roster. Uh, I'll probably look at some film of uh, the Chinese League as well uh, because their season's wrapping up and seeing if there are any guys to come back and help the Suns. So um, that's what I'll be doing. It's also my wife's birthday, so I'll probably take her out to dinner a night or two. But uh, other than that, nothing too exciting. Uh, Just trying to help our team and and trying to see if we can upgrade uh, coming out of the break here when we start practicing again on Wednesday. So, Ryan, when you watch film, is it typically just by your Self, or is there anyone else in the room? Take us into that room with you. Yeah, we, we, we do it both ways. Um, I, I watch a lot, you know, when I'm traveling on my iPad. Um, obviously, you know, live games on TV, like you guys watch them on ESPN, TNT, whatever. Um, and then also in, in a conference room, we have two TVs uh, that can either show live games or off of Apple TV. Um, you know, we, we record games and, and kind of skip through the commercials. Uh, and then we also do breakdowns, especially when we're bringing in a player, uh, like with Alfred Payton. We'll have our video guys go through and do a breakdown with our evaluations of Alfred, you know, prior to a trade. And then uh, post-trade, we'll do a little bit different breakdown and get that to the coaches and staff so they know what he can bring. And then on the flip side of that, uh, we'll have our video guys get a lot of film ready for Alfred. So when he comes in, he kind of is able to study the video playbook. So here are some of our commonly run sets. Uh, here's where Devin Booker likes the ball. Here's where T.J. Warren likes the ball. Here's what our uh, play calls are. Uh, you know, here's what we try to run on uh, underneath out of bounds plays on sideline out of bounds plays. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot in a short period of time, um, but we try to integrate the player as seamlessly as possible. When you're, when you're in a setting like that, more so with your scouts, do you ever say something that's full of crap just to see what their reaction is going to be to it? <laughs> Yeah, I, sometimes I try to steer the conversation in one way, and and, and, and I, I don't think they know if I'm being fully truthful. And what I mean by that is if I really like a guy, I might kill him just to see how they react. Or if I don't like a guy, you know, we may build him up just to see if anybody uh, says, no, wait a minute, I actually like that guy. You know, so we, we encourage independent thought. Uh, we encourage disagreement. Um, you know, as, as we tell the group all the time, uh, if they saw everything the same way I saw it, then we wouldn't need all them. I, I could just do it by myself and pick whichever players uh, I felt were best. So, um, you know, it, it's a fun room. It's lively. Uh, as, as, as Wolf knows, it gets a little bit heated at times, a little bit spirited. Um, but that, that's the fun part of the job, and that's why we have a big scouting staff. But you are taking score on what they say when they <laughs> no absolutely I mean, you're like we're, we're, oh is that how you feel okay we'll put you so, have to you have to evaluate the evaluators and, and we're constantly ranking and re-ranking players um you, you know we, we already have their initial rankings for this right. year's draft that, that was submitted in january and we'll probably do that at least four or five more times every month up until the draft obviously the final rankings the final conclusions uh, in june prior to the draft are the most um substantive and the ones you put the most weight in and then you know we'll look back and over a period of years and see how we did and see how they did i know it's a small sample size right now but what are you seeing out of Alfred Payton? I think he's played phenomenal. Um, you know, at that position to come in uh, without really any kind of practices, with limited shoot arounds, I think he's averaging over 20 points, uh, eight rebounds, and eight assists a game. Um, you know, again, he, he knows barely any of our playbook, but, but he's a smart guy. He's able to pick things up quickly. Uh, he doesn't really have a whole lot of familiarity or continuity with his teammates. But um, that being said, he was able to get Devin Booker 14 three-point attempts the other night and some really good looks in Devin's first game back from injury. So we, we really like Alfred. We were happy to get him. Um, so you guys know the point guard slot's been a glaring hole for us with mm-hmm. the, the Bledsoe trade and the injuries to Brandon Knight. And then uh, Isaiah Cannon who came in and did a great job, uh, you know, snapped his ankle. So we've had a bad run at one position and and we're looking for a long-term answer there and um, we'll we'll evaluate Alfred over the last you know 25 or so games to see if he's that but he's certainly off to a good start. Ryan McDonough general manager Phoenix Suns joining us for Newsmakers Week 2018. 
having said that, you know, and I know, just for any listener that doesn't know, he cannot say the name Sexton. He cannot say the name Trey Young. They're freshmen undeclared, but we can. Yeah. Uh, when when you're looking at this draft coming up this season, and you just mentioned you need a point guard, how many games? Wolf said, you know, it's a small sample size. How many games of Peyton do you need to see before it affects your draft preparation? Before you say. Maybe I don't need a point guard in the draft. What? How long does that process take before you say this restricted free agent needs to be a long-term son? Yeah, that's a good question. You mentioned the restricted free agency, which obviously factors into it. Um, we've been evaluating Alfred for four or five years now, going back to Louisiana Lafayette. Um, you know, in the 2014 draft, we had the 14th pick. Uh, we ended up, you know, picking T.J. Warren, who we've been very happy with. But Alfred went a few picks ahead of us, and uh, we followed him ever since then. And um, you know, through the, through the first three and a half years in Orlando, there've been some up and downs. I, I think he's improved his shooting. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to evaluate him. We, we had a good feel for what we thought he could do coming in the door. Uh, you never know exactly how it's going to mesh and fit. Um, you know, with uh, w- with the teammates, we we, we thought uh, on its surface it was just a big time talent upgrade. You know, just from the physical ability and. Um, it seems it's blended pretty well so far. So we'll, we'll keep evaluating Alfred. Uh, I, I think, you know, where we're projected to be in the draft in the top five or top seven, uh, there are a number of talented players at, at different positions. And um, w- without getting into specifics, uh, most of those guys are guards, either point guards or combo guards or big men, you know, primarily centers. So, um, you know, the, the, I think if you look at our team, those are our two biggest team needs. We feel like the strength of our team uh, at this point are, you know, the young wings, uh, Devin Booker, TJ Warren, Josh Jackson. Those guys have obviously a lot of talent and versatility. Um, but, yeah, you, you know, we've been looking for an upgrade at the point guard and center slot long term. And, um, you know, I, I think this draft will try to fill – or between the draft and free agency, we'll try to fill both those holes the best we can. So speaking of big men – in the draft, there was this little shindig that happened in Tempe last night, and uh, there's were you there, Ryan? <laughs> I, I was not there. I've seen oh, this play a bunch of times. I have the game DVR'd at home. It, it was my wife's birthday, so I, I thought it would be risky <laughs> to go to Tempe to a college basketball oh, good, game instead good. of and taking then, her out to dinner. And then I didn't know how things are going with Boston, but after what you pulled on on the Celtics last year, Danny Ainge was at the game last night, so I don't know if it was better for you to stay away too. But there's uh, uh, when it comes to DeAndre Ayton, uh, I'm again, we're allowed to talk about him. He can't. If there is a generational player that you look at and you say, wow, Hall of Fame already, okay? I don't know if you've ever said that going into a draft before, but if there's a generational player, how far will you go? I have I have joked. I, I, I wouldn't really say I'm joking, depending on how many years we go. If you don't win the draft lottery and, and you call the GM and say, I'll give you my 2018, maybe a couple more of your 2018 picks, he says no. Okay, 2020. He says no. Okay, 2022. He says no. I don't know when I'm stopping, but there would be a three in it before I would start stopping. How far are you willing to go if you think it's a generational player? <laughs> when, when you say there'd be a three, you mean like 2030? Like maybe, uh, maybe. Okay. I don't know when I'm stopping. I, w- I would want, I would want him that bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, per, per, per the rules, you can only trade picks for the length of collective bargaining agreement. So okay. you, probably, you can't go out more than seven or eight years, which okay. I think is probably good, good for a number of reasons. So good. We'll stop uh, safety uh, tip right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but but to your point, um, if there is one guy who's that special, um, we certainly look at that. I mean, that's part of the reason we've accumulated so many assets with draft picks and young players. Um, In addition to all of our own picks, we have first-round pick coming from Miami that's uh, right on the border of the lottery today. I think it's the 15th pick as of today. Uh, We have uh, Milwaukee's first that'll probably, uh, it's more likely to convey next year or the year after. And then we have uh, a very valuable pick from Miami that's completely unprotected in 2021. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'd look at all that if we thought one guy were head and shoulders above the rest. Um, Personally, I I feel like there are a number of good players in this draft, and I I know who you're you're referencing, but, um, you know, we're not opposed to that. We're, we're, we've been, uh, I think, patient, maybe patient to a fault with our assets, with our young players and picks. And uh, I think we're waiting for that one special player to cash it in on, whether that be in the draft or potentially by a trade in, in a big trade package. You know, it's not very often we get a tweet like this, but just a listener, David, tweeted into the show. Please tell Ryan that he has not been patient to a fault. Now think about that. A listener. A fan saying you have not been patient to a fault. Trust the timeline. Don't rush it. And then he throws in, we won eight. So, uh, well, again. you know what? Honestly, <laughs> there are two types of people in the world, Basinonians, those that believe in the timeline and those that do not. Figure out which one you are. You'll live a much happier life. We're talking to Ryan McDonough. He's the general manager of the Phoenix Suns. When you look at the timeline, Ryan McDonough, is it, is it going the way it's supposed to go? 
Well, I, I think that depends on when you ask me in the day. Uh, you know, we're down 40 <laughs> or 50 points. It, uh, it, it might not seem that way. And then uh, other nights when it's, it's clicking and, and, and Devin Booker and Josh Jackson and TJ Warren and uh, our young core is playing at a high level, it, it looks pretty good. So um, I, we were talking a little bit off air, but I, I think, um, you know, that, that's my biggest frustration with how the season has gone is that some of the losses have been pretty bad or pretty extreme. And, um, you know, that's obviously it's frustrating for us. It's, it's embarrassing for us. And we understand the frustration from that part of it. Uh, at the same time, there are other games. Uh, when we played Oklahoma City last month, we played Denver a few weeks ago, That it looks pretty good. So uh, I'm excited to see the last 23 games of the season uh, with a health, healthy Devin Booker, uh, with Alfred Payton integrated with our guys. Um, I think and hope the fans can see the talent. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I understand some of the frustration when the losses go a little bit off the rails. Ryan, do you like the terminology or the term, I should say, timeline because i know you guys didn't come up with it right but yeah do you like that tag the timeline i think it's pretty creative whoever came up with it and i've seen some of the the t-shirts and some of the pictures with uh um you know josh jackson's fro and the cactus and, and little <laughs> tyler Eulis and dragon bender with the wings so um you know I, I i get a kick out of that stuff I, I think it's obviously good good marketing good branding whoever did it um i you know i, I understand why they would do it too you, you know philadelphia had the the process, um, you know, ours, what we're doing, I think, is a little bit different. But you know, we have a number of young players who are, are talented, and and, and um, yeah, like like you said, I think the most important point is not something we came up with. We are trying to build with youth. We're trying to build primarily through the draft. Um, so I, I, I get it. Uh, our, I think our players have, have embraced it, especially the young core. Um, but it's not something that the Phoenix Suns generated. This is one of those questions where it's not really a question. It's just you reacting because right now. And I don't know how how you feel about it. There are people that look at the Suns as a laughing stock. You know, Ray John, uh, Rondo, a guy that you know very very well from your Celtic days, came out last month and was upset that uh, there was a video tribute to it, and said, "We're the Celtics. We don't do this for conference finals. We're not the Suns." And, and actually said the Suns just like that. The the situation with Steve Kerr when he's actually having players draw up plays, the almost fifty point losses, which has never happened in the history of the Suns. There is right now there are there's an embarrassment for some Suns fans. When you look at the position the Suns are in, is it supposed to be this bad? When you thought we need to rebuild, did you anticipate having Rondos of the world call you guys out and say, Hey, we're not that bad? We're talking, you know, I, I know Rajan personally. Um, we have a good relationship. We drafted him in Boston. Uh, he, he was on a 24 win team with, with, the, uh, with the Celtics uh, that had the second worst record in the league and uh, lost 18 games in a row. So, um, you know, I, 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 I don't want to get into a back and forth with Rajan. I, I think the Suns are, what, the fourth or fifth winningest team in, in NBA history. Um, if you look at some of the teams that he's been on recently, I, I don't think they've raised a ton of championship banners. So, um, you know, I, I, we, we kind of brush that off and, and move on. With, with Golden State, um, you, you know, my, my point, I was asked about it the other day uh, when I was on with, with Burns and Gambo. Um, you know, if you look back at Kevin Durant's first few years in the league in Seattle and Oklahoma City, you know, let me know how many games they won. If you look back at Steph Curry's first two, three, two or three years and Clay Thompson's first couple of years in Golden State, Check out their records. Let me know what those look like. So, you know, th- those guys are great players. They're in their prime. They're rolling through the league in their late 20s. It wasn't always that way. That wasn't always the case. They've been where we are now. So, um, you know, as far as what Steve Kerr did, I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know, we worried about our own team. And you know, like we tell our guys, if you're upset about it, fix it. Let's stop it. And if we can't stop it today, then we'll bring in more reinforcements this summer and get in the weight room and get on the practice court and stop it next year when we come back out in October and feel the more competitive team that's hopefully able to compete with those guys. In terms of the assets that you have right now, right, in some of the cap room as well, right, I would look at the timeline and you've even talked about the possibility of speeding up the timeline. Are you getting ready, Ryan McDonough? Are you getting ready to push your chips into the center of the table, metaphorically speaking? At the right time, I think we will, Wolf, and and that may be this summer. That may be in June and July, uh, and around the draft or in free agency. Um, you know, we've certainly patiently built for that. We wanted, uh, um, you know, to come out of this with a few core pieces to build around, and certainly Devin Booker's established himself as the main pillar. Um, you know, we'll see if guys like T.J. Warren and Josh Jackson, maybe Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris can emerge. Maybe Alfred Payton can emerge as a core piece to build around. Um, 
were one of five or six teams with a significant amount of salary cap space this summer. Mm-hmm. And, and and I think to your earlier question, part of that is is why we're taking some bad losses is because over the last few summers, when teams spent money like crazy, like it like like it was a the salary cap was going to continue to rise forever. We were patient and disciplined and didn't really do that. And, and that, that was hard, to be honest with you. It, it's easier to throw a bunch of money around and say, we'll figure it out down the road. Uh, we didn't do that. We, we said, all right, we'll, we'll bring in a few more young guys at a lower, lower cost and give ourselves the flexibility down the road. When Devin Booker and TJ Warren and Josh Jackson, these guys are ready to win at a higher level, when they have more experience. So um, that, that part of it's hard. Uh, at the same time, I, I think you'll see in June and, and especially in July in free agency, um, when you look at the available cap space around the league, there's not a whole lot out there, and there, there are a number of good players who will be available. And I, I think um, it's good from the team perspective. It's probably not great from the players' perspective because uh, a lot of teams spent themselves out the past couple of years. We didn't do that. So I think and hope that it'll be a buyer's market this summer mm-hmm. and we'll be in a good position to add to our young core and, and take the next step uh, next, next season. Is there, any, is there any thought of speeding up the timeline because of Devin Booker, this is going to sound funny, his age, because he's going to start moving into closer and closer to the restricted free agent years to make sure he sees progress before he starts thinking, you know what, I love Phoenix, but I want to win, so I need to go somewhere else. Do you have to start looking at that? I don't mean his talent. I mean his attitude, his his ideas of where he needs to go to win. When you, when you say his age, like he's getting up there at 21 years I know, old. That's, what I, mean. I said, that's like why I laugh ago, about it. But, but what, you know the contract probably memorized. 2020 is when he hits restricted free agency? Am I probably yeah, right Yeah, so there, on that? there are a couple different uh, things to do with Devin. And obviously we, we view him as the, the core piece of our team and the building block we want to build around. Um, so th- this summer, uh, he's eligible for an extension. Um Regardless of whether you know he signs that or, or not, um, you know he, he has next year the 2018-19 season under contract. Uh, the following summer in 2019, he's again eligible for an extension, uh, and then he's also a restricted free agent. So um, you know I, I think people are getting a little bit ahead of themselves. I understand given that you know his talent level and his age and that he's played so well. Um, you, you know, Devin likes being in Phoenix. He loves being a member of this community. Uh, he's very close with a lot of his teammates. Uh, he, he and uh, I have a good relationship. He has a great relationship with Robert Sarver, our owner. Um, so, you know, we, we view Devin as a core piece, and we'll talk to him this summer about the possibility of an extension. So, um, you know, I, I think it's not necessarily his age or his contract status. I think more than anything, it's the fact that he's a really good player uh, who deserves better players around him. And we'll do whatever we can to make that happen uh, this upcoming offseason. Are you happy with the job Jay Triano has done? Yeah, I, I think uh, he's been dealt a really tough hand. And, and I, I feel bad that every time it fe- seems like we have something going or we're in a, you know, at least a decent spot where we're competitive, something else happens. And what I mean by that is um, I feel like Isaiah Cannon, who we brought in off the street, did a really good job kind of stabilizing our team. Uh, w- even when Devin was out of the lineup, we won a few games when Isaiah first arrived against Minnesota and Dallas. And then Devin came back and we were competitive. And then, you know, I- I- Isaiah snaps his ankle in half and we have to go to the G League to get another guy. Um, so if-, if you look at, you know, who we thought we were going to have to start the year, um, mm. Our backcourt rotation probably looks something like Eric Bledsoe and Devin Booker, um, backed up by Brandon Knight, uh, maybe Davon Reed, um, you know, Tyler Eulis. All those guys have experienced some level of injury, a couple of them season-ending injuries. Um, so as you're trying to add in pieces on the fly with a young team, uh, that's really hard to do. And so we realized the hand that Jay has been dealt. He's done a good job with the player development. Um, I, I think one of the main ways we're evaluating him is, you know, is Josh Jackson getting better? Yes, he is. I, I, is Dragon Bender getting better? Yes. Those guys are developing. They're improving rather than, you know, do we line up toe-to-toe with Golden State and beat them? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a tough task for anybody, especially us at this point with a really young team. Is Mark Cre- uh, Marquise Crease? <laughs> Whoa. Marquise Chris, is he still 100% on the timeline? Is he disappointing you? Is he falling off the timeline? What's his future right now? Well, Marquise is a really talented young player um, who has some pretty significant, you know, ups and downs. And I, I thought, um, you know, he came into the season a little bit out of shape. Uh, he worked hard to get in better shape. I, I think by late December he was there and had a really good run in late December, early January of games where he was scoring, rebounding. I think the Hawks game was one of his better games. We had that incredible athletic play where he stopped the ball and somehow also blocked a shot at the rim to win the game. So uh, I think everybody can see the talent, the potential. Uh, at the same time, you can see the inconsistency. And, you know, one of the things with Marquise is he's been dealing with a nagging hip injury. Uh, we haven't really publicized it a whole lot. He's missed a few games, but he's 
also tried to play through it. Um, so that's where I, I think and hope this extended All-Star break, this nine or ten days that we have, uh, helps him physically coming out of it. Because um, obviously he, he physically is ahead of uh, where he is in terms of his experience at this point. Um, but we like the talent. We like him. Uh, you know, we just have to gain the consistency and, and help him regain a little bit of his confidence. Ryan McDonough is the general manager of the Phoenix Suns, and anybody who comes in studio always gets a question that's not really a question. It's just a, here's the PA microphone to let you talk directly to the fans without the feed, uh, the the filter of the media. What do you want the fans to know about the 2018 Suns and going into the offseason? Well, we want them to know we appreciate their support, and uh, you, you know we know that some of the losses have been ugly. Um, we also think and hope they can see the young talent shine through on certain nights, hopefully on most nights. Um, over the last 23 games, we're going to use that to evaluate everything about our team and our roster, and um, uh, you know that be, being from. Uh, style of play in terms of the uh, you know system we want to play going forward, systems offensively and defensively. We're going to evaluate the individual players on our roster. Um, you, you know, at this point, uh, going into the offseason, we're not really locked into any big long-term contracts that would be prohibitive uh, from making some aggressive moves. And, you know, we talked earlier about the draft picks and the, um, the young talent on the roster. So um, I, I think James Jones said it when he was in the other day, we're open to any avenue. And I think and hope how we play the last 23 games will uh, kind of nudge just in one direction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at the same time, we talked about it earlier, uh, we think we're ready for that next step. We think Devin in particular is ready for that next step. So uh, I I think you'll see us be more aggressive than we have been. And uh, that's probably after adding a very talented player in this draft, uh, which uh, we can't talk about today, but maybe in May and June when the early entry list comes out, we'll we'll talk about some more. 98.7 FM, Arizona's sports station.